we were at a meeting where we underlined a little bit the importance of the role of the governments themselves. Um, at least I would like to ask Mr. Singh, when you are talking with these governments and you are talking about the urban needs and you are talking about the rural needs, do you find more and more emphasis from these governments to really play a role in facilitating the action plans we need for the next future. And I mean that by uh, are they willing to support alternatives, at least in the sub supply, alternatives in the decentral water supply and sanitation options there are, or are they merely focusing on piped water networks in the next future? You're talking about peri urban areas or urban areas? Now? I'm talking about those areas where there is no piped water at the moment. There will be no piped water in the next few years. Not only because of lack of money, but we really should reconsider the need to extend the pipe networks as we know, as we can, uh, as, we, as we experience at the moment. There is a big need for alternative solutions in water supply and sanitation. And how can governments empower this? Not only the FFI, uh, IFI. You said in your statement, IFI should develop should develop uh, financial packages, includes including the empowerment of local financial markets. And I fully agree on that. But for that, you need the support of the government in terms of regulation, in terms of facilitation, to give access to these new alternatives. Thank you. Please, thank you. you. Add the second question. Uh, my name is Nehalata. I'm coming from uh, Andhra Pradesh, India. Uh, basically, I'm here uh, to bring my the water user from India. Uh, my specific question uh, regarding the government's policies that, yeah, they are agreeing to go with the coverage with 2020, especially Kulwant was saying that the government of India is looking at 2020. But I'm still wondering, one side we are going for coverage, but we are having so many other problems of covered villages falling back or slipping back and there are so many other complicated issues which have to be addressed alongside of reaching the coverage. How are we addressing this? Well, this is the first one. And the second one, I completely agree with Kristen, saying that we need to have a global action plan and the targets and all these things. But why doing so, we have to really, really keep in mind about the poorest of the poor, who cannot even understand about these rights and this implementation and all these things. And before they, these programs reach to the poorest of the poor, many of them would have lost their lives. So I think these two points are very, very important. Thank, Thank you. you. This gives the two panelists the uh, opportunity to respond. Mr. Singh. I think uh, governments have to play the role, the national governments as well as the provincial and local governments. And if you actually see, during the last 15 years or so, very particularly after the MDG, many governments in all regions have now got a formal national water policy. Those national water policies are not just talking of the government's role, but they are water policies to ensure how to reach every citizen both in rural and urban areas. If you also see the kind of trends that are there, there are now partnerships which are developing. One also sees a emerging role for social entrepreneurs who are trying to supply water or even provide sanitation facilities and that role as a matter of fact is quite increasing, significantly increasing and there as a matter of fact there is a need for fine-tuned governmental policies on that account. 2002 we had a policy in India, 2012 currently it's being hotly debated to review it, basically because of the changing scenario. And I totally agree that piped water supply may not be a complete answer. You will have to find alternative ways and means. Thank and you. surely, I think, you know, 
it also probably I think I got partly answers. It's a dynamic situation both in rural and urban areas, and it cannot be that on one day the target will be achieved and there is nothing else to do by the government. It will continue like that in any case, but we have to really ensure that access is there for safe drinking water as in many developed countries. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Kerstin, two three sentences. <laughs> That's difficult, but I'll try. I think it's really important to recognize that in improving rural access, it needs local action. Harmonized, coordinated local action. I can give you an example of a country unnamed where I visited a district water office and an NGO 50 meters apart and they didn't talk to each other. Yeah. This is no way of reaching access, to giving access, ensuring that everybody has access. So look and let me go from there to monitoring that, that local governments are able to monitor and see who has access, who doesn't, how is access improving, where, and take decisions and make sure that stakeholders coming in implement work in the areas of the most need. That's essential in the local context and that happens locally and needs to be driven from the centre. So that all of these very interesting, specific local initiatives being done can come together and feed in to a national vision and national achievement of universal access to water for all. I hope that answers somehow your, your question and comment. Thank you, Kirsten. And I also note it's a perfect, uh, actually, a perfect bridge to the next panel because you already talked about the role of national monitoring, global monitoring. So I thank the two panelists and I invite now Mr. Uh, Alain Rothbard from the uh, French Development Agency, Mr. Didier Alain from WHO Joint Monitoring Program. They will talk about the main results in this target group discussions around the role of national monitoring, uh, local monitoring, uh, reporting and the role of global monitoring. <laughs>